One thing that I think has prevented widespread adoption is the fact that in any speaker system, the configuration and the setup is extremely important. So not only do you need the left and right speaker to be to the left and right in order to achieve that stereo image, yeah. but when you add even more speakers, you first off need them to be spaced where that speaker is designed to be spaced within that given configuration, exactly, but also yes, the yes. time of arrival differences. It's, it's asking a lot of a person watching a film at home yes. to set all this up. And that's what excites me about what you were getting at, which is HRTFs, how can we bring a 360 degree experience to someone with just headphones? Something that's very common and very easy to configure. You put headphones in your ears and you're done. Right. Yes, yes, absolutely. So we might expect uh, immersive audio to be the next big thing simply because now the technology is available and because everybody can experience this with headphones. It's basically independent of the production system. If you produce um, like channel-based, multi-channel 3D audio or uh, within the ambisonics domain is three-dimensional sound field or object-based complex composition of um, positions in space with uh, their respective sources connected. But uh, this all can be played back via headphones. If you can bring a virtual head with virtual ears in this virtual space and let this virtual head listen, yeah. to this sound field independent of how it has been created. So the result will then always be two-channel format. We might not call this stereo, but binaural. I have a video on binaural audio. And when I first learned about it, it was in terms of binaural recording, where you yes. had a binaural microphone, which were two microphones embedded in either a, a head or some sort of apparatus. Right. They had right. outer ear. Yes. It had a baffling mechanism that right. if a sound was coming from over here, it would sound nice and clear, let's say, to this ear. Yeah. And then to this ear, it would be shadowed by the head. Yeah. And w I was amazed at how realistic. I mean, you close your eyes. And you, have you heard of this virtual barbershop? Yes, yes, yes. This I remember the first time I heard this that. This is so famous. I was... I mean, it's it's a moment where you open your eyes and you're a little bit surprised that you're yes. not really sitting there. Yeah. And it, that's something I'm passionate about. I get chills talking yes, about it. Yes, yes, yes. What's amazing now is that things don't have to be recorded with a binaural microphone yeah. in order for that to happen. Yeah. Um, you were telling me that you're doing research where you can measure someone's unique HRTF head-related transfer function yeah. that basically describes or represents the transfer function that is related to that person's head. Yes. Right. Which and, is very individual. Yeah. You had also mentioned that while we were walking yeah. through that yeah. there are generic HRTFs, yeah. which are sort of, I guess, the average of everyone. Yeah. And that may or may not work for you. But if you can somehow find a way to have your own unique head structure profile, then that listening right. experience can be even right. more realistic and more right. similar to how you've experienced the world just in your everyday life. Is that correct? Yeah. 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 The magic of, of uh, binaural uh, audio uh, to, to me starts with uh, uh, the, the illusion that is created by means of the, the disturbance of the sound field with uh, one's head and ears. So wh what you're describing, that uh, the sound arriving from one side would be nice and clear on one side, but then shadowed and a bit later due to the distance and uh, due to the shadowing of the head. On the other side, this is what we would measure. And then if we take actual looks at the then two channel transfer functions that, that we get, uh, then we, we find from from perspective of audio technology, the, this is weird uh, filter functions like um, 20 decibels uh, difference between the ears at certain frequencies. Um, but we do not perceive any coloration of sound. We perceive space. We perceive a position in space. And the new technology is that this all can be uh, created in the digital domain. So we don't need this dummy head microphone or probe microphones in our own ears. Yeah, and some people may be asking, okay, does that mean to make a mix more immersive, I need to put a, a deep EQ on this thing over here to, <laughs> yeah. to somehow mimic those filters. Yeah. Well, no, you can build your mix with 
a surround sound physical speaker setup if you have one in your studio. Yeah. But new technologies um, such as Sony 360 Reality, such as uh, Dolby Atmos, these allow you to just basically pan something, for lack of a better yeah. word, yeah. in yeah. a virtual space, yeah. which will then be adapted to different yeah. speaker systems, including a binaural setup. Uh, right. That's what's really right. exciting right. because now, getting back to what I was saying, that obstacle of someone setting up the speakers in a very specific way that's that's been eliminated mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. now the the file you're listening to itself can be adapted to whatever you're listening to even if right. it's just two headphones right, right. 